I worked so hard to combat FOMOing and holding over the years that I've gotten myself in a situation where it's very hard for me sometimes to make a trade because I'm I just overthink it. I overthink it to the point where then I end up not moving. That's what I'm really good at. I'm good at thinking up all kinds of trades and then not doing them and just buying the dip and sticking to what I have chosen. And this has really actually served me well over the years and has proven to work time and time again. However, sometimes, especially in this particular market in this climate that we found ourselves in, you actually can't take advantage of a little bit more active trading. And it's very hard to know when you have you know, built up such a, a diligence and doing things a certain way and holding and weathering the storm, not changing your mind, not letting outside influence and media affect your trades that then you're like, Oh my God, should I, should I not? The oil situation is a very, um, it's a good example of this, right? Tech has been just been getting beat. Um, you know, I've lost me 50, 50, 50% or so. I mean, I have a hard time even saying it 50% or so in tech since December. And so what have I done? I just keep buying the dip, keep buying, buying crypto. I just keep putting it in. And then after a while, I think I'm like, well, this particular situation has the conflict in Ukraine has really added a spin to things, which has made it a little bit more difficult to predict, hard to predict when the recovery is going to happen. And you see these profits dwindling. And so then you start thinking, and I know this is part of the FOMO. It's like, well, if I got out of tech and went into oil for a couple of weeks, a month or so I could regain what I've lost then you bounce back into tech right as it's taken back off but that's a big gamble there because how do you know the moment you get out of tech tech doesn't bounce up right and how do you know the moment you get into oil it's gonna keep going up well you know and I've thought about it in day and day and so I've taken a long time over a week every single day I've looked at all the stats and I've held back from making the trades, and I finally made the decision to be in oil this week, right? This following week, and then maybe jump back into tech depending on how things come. So, you know, I know the dangers of this, but tech has been on such a downtrend that now looking at the figures, I really am starting to think that that bounce that we had last week was really due to earnings reports. The thing changes also because it happened in crypto as well. So a lot more money flew into tech. Tech is oversold, right? So it's a really good buying opportunity, but we don't know exactly when this recovery is going to start. So in a normal situation, I'll say just keep buying the dip. But I really, uh, I don't know, for some reason, you know, I'm taking this chance. Now, if you're thinking, you know, oil is kind of in a bubble right now, you know, it's shot up. It's at all time highs. Why go now? Why try to do this? Can it go higher? Well, so there's a few things that create um danger some things you got to think about right so i think that they're kind of over hyping our dependence on oil from russia or how much that will affect the oil price when we shut it down now we haven't shut it down yet but i think that the pressure will finally get to biden you know he'll make the call we're going to stop importing russian oil how much will that affect the price not as much as the media is pushing it i believe and there's the point that uh oil oil prices don't really have a huge lapse right so when you buy new barrels there's a delay with the delivery so the moment they start making manufacturing pulling whatever you know the process is of getting this oil ready to be shipped they're selling you the price so when they increase the manufacturing whatever they're selling it like 86 right so like oh we're delivering in two months but right now we're selling you the new price of the volume that we're pumping right now capito so the price what i'm trying to say not very eloquently is that the price can change faster than you think even though it's not being delivered now so you're thinking all oh, right well, you know we have this high demand low supply this is not going to change for so amount of time and then boom it gets you when opec or other you know people make deals strike deals and decide to start pumping more see what i'm saying so that also creates kind of a gamble however you know, I've heard ExxonMobil CEO and other people talk about oil prices and they're really seeing uh, that it's going to go higher before it goes lower. And that's kind of what I am banking on. Now, if you're looking at the kind of returns you're having in oil, you're talking about, uh, you know, minimum five, six percent a day on average days during training days during the week. So you can see a bounce of 20, 25 percent per week. Now, these are gains that are harder to ignore than uh, than previously. 
So it's kind of a gamble, you know, but I think uh, I think I'm going to take it because in the end I'm losing 20-25% per week in tech almost, you know, well, not not really, but you know, getting close to losing that in tech. So even if I jumped into oil and it and it went down a little bit, it is probably not going to lose more than I would have in tech anyway. So what do you guys think about that? You know, that's kind of my my strategy that I'm going to throw in and I've been second guessing myself. It's good to second guess yourself to not do strange plays because there's uh, there's not a high chance of it working out exactly like you planned. I could get into oil and it could go down. I could get into oil and it could go up, but tech could go up too so that maybe I'm not gaining as much as I would have sticking just in tech. So there's all kind of obvious scenarios where this can play out. But, you know, and when something starts falling like it has with tech, I, you know, I could have tried to catch the knife while it was falling and just move it to gold or to something stable or move it to oil previously, you know, but it's one of those things. Hindsight is 2020. You can always look back and say, I should have, would have, could have, and you're never going to catch it. What are you going to do now? You know, and I've been thinking about switching to oil over the week ago. And if I had done that over a week ago, I'd already be up 30% from what I am now. So the question is, do I go ahead and pull the trigger or do I keep waiting? Overall, I think the sentiment for the next few weeks, I just don't really see tech outperforming oil in the next couple of weeks. And so I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and I'm going to make this play and wish me luck. We'll see how this plays out. We will see. And it's starting Monday, trading day. We'll see which one performs. You know, my strong holdings are Etsy, Shopify, SQ. I got a ridiculous amount of money in tech and I'm going to port all of that over to oil ETF ticker symbol O-I-L, or I might even put it in the other one I was talking about, USO, well, not USO, but there is a um, U, uh, URO, what? let me check this out, it is a leveraged oil, now that's really putting the um, pressure up, but the leveraged one is uh, UCO, ProShares, that's a 2x oil prices so i don't know if i'll go that far maybe just go in the regular one but we'll see what happens you guys well, hang on it's been very difficult times lately it's tough to see things drop so much and you know crypto has held up so much more bitcoin going back up over forty thousand. now it's dipped again but you have a lot of tech stocks that have lost 50 to 80 percent of their value while the majority of crypto is only down 40 50 percent so uh bitcoin even less than you know 50 percent so, you know, I don't have an explanation to it. Uh, my only explanation is that people in crypto have stronger hands. There's less FOMOing, less selling going on. All right. Thank you guys. As always, buy red, sell green.